All right, so we are back. We're doing another, uh, I don't know, this video conference, like whatever you want to call this thing. Uh, you know, we've had Zach Cohen on. We have Blaine. We're going to have Patrick Chiai tomorrow. But I got my guy, Mike Hernishan. He is the FCS and Sunbelt Area Scout for Blue Chip Scouting. Yes, I'm reading right there. I would not have remembered that. <laughs> and he's the host of the Big Shots pod. And if you guys watched the, it was two years ago, you watched the Downtown Rams uh, or Downtown Sports Center, whatever we called it, uh, draft show. He's the guy who was cussing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was the guy that had to make you put it as explicit for day two, just because yeah. of one pick that oh, wasn't even I that day. I got a day. story for you. I got a story <laughs> for you. So, so I posted the raw audio uh, under the, <laughs> on uh the downtown Rams podcast and iTunes literally made us an explicit podcast. <laughs> I was only on, that's the thing. That was day two of the draft. I was yeah. on it for like 10 minutes tops. I know. <laughs> and I swore so much that they're just like, nah, we have to label you as explicit. I am doing my best today. I will be on my best behavior today, sir. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Uh, Cause <laughs> I, I don't know. We we don't want to get explicit or plus whatever they they do plus eighteen or whatever they call it on YouTube. <laughs> but uh, hey, welcome Aiden. Welcome uh, the Philly three two nine one. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, yeah. So we're gonna talk about what everybody's talking about, and that's mm-hmm. Julio Jones. I have a video coming out later on that will break that down from my perspective. Uh, so I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna give you the floor on your thoughts on this. Um. What were your thoughts? How? What was your reaction? Is this the best fit for Julio? I think it is the best fit for Julio. I I, I know that there was talks about the oh he wants to go to a team with a you know rocket arm quarterback and people I mean both in and out of the football world were kind of going oh well like wouldn't this be great for the Chiefs? It's like yeah, but like the salary cap exists to an extent. Like they can't, yeah. they, that would just, and, and I know you're happy because it was a superstar that avoided getting traded to the NFC West for once. Oh, uh, how'd you know? Because <laughs> <laughs> every time there's a trade that happens in the NFC West, I just, I just see Jacob, damn it, every time. Every time. My, every- my Twitter feed. <laughs> Here's the thing. I do it like I play it off like, okay, I'm just, I'm just getting my thoughts out one tweet. <laughs> And then I ponder it 15 minutes later. I'm like, did that really have to happen? And you guys, like, you can see it on the on the feed. Every time. I'm, like, wrestling with my own thoughts. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, no, like, Tennessee makes a lot of sense. They desperately needed, a, uh, like, another target in the offense. They lost Jonu Smith, who was the, the, you know, the tight end and was the number two passing option last year. I mean, A.J. Brown is amazing. He was my wide receiver, too, in – in uh, 2019, we won't talk about who wide receiver was uh, one was in that draft. It doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> but Julio makes a lot of sense, and I know a lot of like fantasy people are upset because AJ Brown was kind of guaranteed all of these targets, and obviously Julio comes in changes that. But I mean, now you have. I mean, I don't think it's unfair to say that AJ Brown's like a top 20, maybe even top 15 receiver in the NFL. Now you have Julio as well. Now, I got a text almost immediately from a buddy of mine that doesn't really follow the NFL. He plays Madden, but like outside of that, he's not much of an NFL guy. He goes, if Julio's this good, why did he only get traded for a second and a fifth? And I had to kind of explain that like because of the way the salary cap works, because of the way the the money works, Julio's 32 years old as well. So like, you know, if you're a hockey player, 32 is is, you're still kind of in a little bit of your prime. Um, you know, basketball, I mean, God only knows what the NBA, like guys get traded, three and D guys get traded for like lottery protected picks. What's your prime, by the way? Like what? Cause to me, I've always said 26 to 32. Yeah. It's like, it's a, that like 25 to like 32 ish range. Yeah. That's kind of, you know, your athletic peak and Julio's good. You know, he's still really good, but he's going to start trending down pretty soon, maybe within the next year and a half. So with that contract, with the uh, amount of, you know, money you're going to have to pay him going forward and the fact that he's going to be on the downswing, like Pat McAfee was 
cussing up a storm on Twitter because the Colts didn't, you know, uh, offer up a first. It's like, well, Chris Ballard is not have done that. Is smarter than that. And like, Chris Ballard would not have done that. No, Chris Ballard <laughs> absolutely wouldn't have done that. He's Chris the Ballard, Godfather. He yeah, exactly. He loves his cap space that he doesn't use yeah. ever, <laughs> ever. Mine. <laughs> exactly. He just he he wants his cap space to himself, and paying that for a 32 year old receiver. That I mean, Julio's had some injuries in the past. Don't forget, he got hurt at Bama too. Oh like, yeah, he Absolutely. did the combine on a broken foot. He still like, he's got a, screws in his foot. I yeah, believe. yeah. So I mean, I mean, the risk. It's a and plus, especially we want to talk about Indy in specifics. They already have a first rounder going to Philly next year, so they yeah. weren't going to trade a two and a five. They're not going to become the Texans and not pick till the, till round three. They'd rather the Texans just stay the Texans. They don't want to become them. <laughs> um that's great but yeah like for for tennessee i think it's a great move now one of our guys over at blue chip uh russell jacobowski said like oh well i don't think it's out of the question to say that the the titans are a super bowl contender i wouldn't go that far because i think out of the afc you still have to get by kansas city you still have to get by uh the ravens you still have to get by the browns i'm not even going to mention the steelers they're i mean the steelers are close I'm going to get flack from like all 800,000 Steelers fans that still think Big Ben is back in like 2011 um, and, and can make the Super Bowl. But no, no. Uh, oh, Aiden is going to have rip <laughs> you a fired. new one. That's Aiden why you bring me on rip here. you a new one. That's why you bring me on here. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, we run Philadelphia. Uh, oh. We run Pennsylvania lately, too. Well, yeah, okay. You, you butchered the first part. So I did. I to totally did. Uh damn Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, this is, I was looking so forward to this because I knew you and I would be trying to basically crack each other up for oh, a I mean, good, that's what we good do. 10 minutes. Exactly. Yeah. We, I mean, we, we do it whether we really realize, realize it is not a thing, <laughs> realized it or not, whether we realize it or not, we're doing that over like, say, I don't know, uh, Facebook chat. Oh, yeah. Text, Twitter DMs. Oh, definitely. I'm laughing in my chair when you say things. I know you're doing the same. So, uh, dude, if it's it, it, dude, I, I can get Jake to laugh at anything from talking about football to literally just like, you know, oh, yeah, by the way, I do Starbucks better than Starbucks does. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's true. It's it's the it's the way you say it. But then also <laughs> it's the way you do it as far as uh, like talking. But we we were kind of leaning towards the Eagles there. I think you want to talk about your team. What What's up with them? Because to me, I don't think there ever should have been a question whether Jalen Hurts was the guy. I mean, I, I think it, it's hilarious to mm -hmm. me how people were so quick to be like, oh, they made a mistake by not drafting a quarterback. Why? Like, so, why? I don't understand that. Do I think that Jalen Hurts is going to be a long-term quarterback in Philly? No. I mean, looking back to my 20... Uh, 20, yeah, my 2020 rankings. I had to stop and think about what year I was down in Mobile to watch him. The Happened. same year I met you. Yeah. Uh, it feels I like four years ago. Then. Yeah, you went <laughs> exactly. It feels like for, a minute. <laughs> yeah, it feels like forever ago. It was last year. Um, you know, I had Hertz as like a late third, early fourth. So taking him at 50, um, you see, you've seen my reaction to that pick. Yeah. <laughs> it was weird at the time, and I'm a huge Wentz fan, as you know, and mm -hmm. that's actually how we bonded mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> in Mobile. Yeah, um, uh, but, but like, yeah, I don't. He didn't play well last year, but no one on Philly played well. Like the offensive line was missing at on most weeks, like three starters because Brooks was hurt, Dillard was hurt. He's probably not even going to be a starter this year. Lane Johnson, uh, Dillard's can't... not going to be a starter. Uh, no, wow. likely not. Because if, actually, like, if Lane Johnson off. comes back, he's your right tackle. Yeah. And the team loves Jordan Mailata. I tackle. love Jordan Mailata. Which, and here's I mean, the thing. I love yeah. him. Which, I mean, here's the thing. You're not going to try to move Lane Johnson at 32 years old to left tackle so, no. so you can keep Mailata, which means you have to play him at left tackle. And Dillard, they, I mean, I heard from Kyle Krabs not too long ago that even after Dillard's rookie season, they were looking at possibly trading him. Like they were looking at trading Diller that early on. He started six games in his career. Do you uh, like Dillard? Cause I didn't like the pick at all. I was okay with the pick get, because I didn't think that my would, pro would progress the way he has. 
But since my lot has gotten a lot better and Dillard can only play left tackle and he's an, he was an older prospect. He was 23 or 24 Dude, when he was drafted. That kick slide is special. Like mm-hmm. he he's, he's a different breed for me. I mean, like I, I think he could have played last year like a lot and I've been saying it for a while. I'm like, if the Eagles ever just don't realize what they have in that guy, I hope the Rams go after him because my lot is the truth. And then after and I had this, he was this so thought, raw, but it's worked. Yeah. And then after I had this thought, <clears throat> I see none other than Brian Baldinger coming out with his, you know, film breakdown tweet. And he's like, Jordan Mylotta, man, like this, this kick slide. I was like, I was saying the same thing. <laughs> like, uh, but no, like the offensive line w- was hurt. Uh, and, and, and I mean, I've talked about this for uh, literally an entire year now. The Eagles draft strategy in 2020, uh, sorry, in 2020 was let's draft fast guys that cannot catch. Oh, and Rager. Then you got Rager, who can catch. <laughs> the dead silence. The dead I mean, silence. That in that draft class, Rager, Hightower, and Watkins all had like in the bottom ten in terms of catch percentage. It was bad. Like yeah, and they got all three, and they're all duplicates of the of each other. They're all fast. They're all small, and they all have questionable hands. Jalen Rager still has me blocked to this day. Uh, <laughs> I wonder why. I wonder why. Um, and, and when like your only non-speed guys are players like Travis Fulgham, who came out of nowhere and played well, but I mean it's Travis Fulgham and JJ Arcega Whiteside, who was drafted two selections ahead of DK Metcalf. Oh boy, we could have taken that problem off your hands, and I bet you the Rams would love to play Arcega Whiteside rather than than DK Metcalf. Um, oh, yeah. But, like, given that everything around him was was bad, other than the running back in Miles Sanders, and this team had to be playing catch-up more often than not, it was bound to be good. Now, on draft day, when they traded up from 12 to 10 and Fields was still there, I thought it was going to be for Fields. And then as soon as I realized, wait, we just traded up two picks to get ahead of the Giants, it made no sense because the Giants weren't going to draft a quarterback because it's Dave Gettleman, and Dave Gettleman loves him some Daniel Jones. He shouldn't, but he does. Um, So I knew that there was no reason, unless they were trying to stave off someone else trading up. So I have no problem with Devontae Smith. I I, I would have been okay with him at six, to be honest with you. I didn't want the Eagles to draft a quarterback that early on in the draft because, and I mentioned this on several streams, we knew uh, Lawrence was going to go one. We knew Wilson was going to go two, which meant that realistically we had to trade trade up. And this team's in, going into a long-term rebuild. So you'd be giving up assets to go and get Fields or, or Lance. And then you're doing three... You know, you're doing the third best quarterback, or if one fell to you at six, it was like the third or fourth best quarterback in a class, and that's risky. So keep feel, uh, sorry, keep uh, keep hurts this year is, is what I would say. Hope that maybe I mean I looked at the schedule, I looked at the roster. There's a reason that I'm probably rebuilding them in Madden next year. It's because it's not good. Like Jason Kelsey may not be back. Who knows if Lane Johnson's going to, you know, you know, going to be able to remain healthy. Brandon Brooks is coming off of an Achilles tear in his thirties now too. Uh, and cr- I mean, look at the top two picks. They're risky. Devonte Smith, really, really small. Creed Humphrey. Oh, sorry, not Creed Humphrey. Uh, oh God. Who, L- Landon Dickerson, the other, the other setter. Uh, Landon yeah, Dickerson. Another, four, another total, you know, yeah, four season ending injuries. Upside through the roof, ceiling. Uh, sorry, yeah, upside through the roof, ceiling sky high. Floor, Danny Watkins. <laughs> There's a name you didn't expect to hear on today's uh, stream, Danny Watkins. If I can shoehorn a Danny Watkins reference into any time I'm talking about, you will Philly, do it. I will do it because he was a 26 year old Canadian firefighter that they drafted in round one, and that wasn't Chip Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, man. I just I look at the Eagles and I'm like I really like Jalen Hurts. I'd like to see him have some success, mm-hmm. but I don't see a lot here. I mean, you know, obviously the receivers. There's three big names. I mean, Fulgham kind of made himself known last year. We talked about, you know, Rager is a big name by draft pick, and then you have Devonte Smith. Um, 
but you know, like Zach Ertz, you're probably going to be trading. I really like mm -hmm. Dallas Goddard, but he's on a contract you know, here too. Yeah. So then you look at the defense. Um, you guys quietly got Anthony Harris. Love that pickup. Mm -hmm. And you have Darius Slay, of course, who I love. But Patrick it's like Locke's still there. But yeah, like there there's some pieces, but it's just so and I feel like honestly, you go to any NFL team in this league right now, and it's like they all have like there's not a team that's a total crapshoot except for like the Texans. Like the Texans <laughs> literally and honestly, I don't even think the Texans are horrible. They're just horrible where we are in the NFL right mm -hmm. now. Like, honestly, in the 90s, that Texans team would have competed. Yeah. Because they have a bunch of guys that are equipped because they got a bunch of guys that are literally guys that are playing to stay in this league. So they signed to go there. They signed to put tape out. When you look at a guy like Philip Lindsay, you know, he went there to kind of revitalize his career in a sense. You know, mm -hmm. they got Tyrod Taylor, who's just clinging on for dear life to try. Remember to when he was fantasy relevant for like yeah. a year or two? Well, I like Tyrod. I think uh, yeah. the, the injuries got to him and he is getting older. And I think yeah. people need to realize that. And a big part of his game is his mobility and he's losing that. And, and, and with you know? Philly, with Philly specifically, you mentioned the defense, like Anthony Harris is, is, is good. Darius Slay is good. Uh, Brandon Graham is good. Fletcher Cox is good. But there's one problem with all four of those guys. They're all either pushing 30 or in their 30s. Yeah. And I, and then yeah. the rest of the de the defense is just, I mean, that linebacking core is atrocious. Uh, oh, you're Sean, like, by the way. Sean Bradley. Uh, Hey, <laughs> I, I knew you'd be like, I'm just, I was, I told you this. See guys, he was worried about coming on because he wasn't sure if anybody would like it. No, <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't say that. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh man. But uh, like, you know, that linebacking core was atrocious. Like Nate Geary is one of the worst linebackers <laughs> I've ever seen in my entire life. And here's the thing. You have a tweet for that. <laughs> I think I do one or one or two, or one maybe or two, 12, but probably and, and, and like the TJ Edwards. And then they drafted two of the same linebacker last year and Sean Bradley and Davion Taylor. They're like the same guy. And and here's the thing. All draft, all draft season. My guys at blue chip scouting were like, but the Eagles are going to go ahead and get Pete Werner in round two. Oh my God. And then I threw up so... in my mouth at them suggesting that because one, that's such an Eagles pick. It, it, oh my god! You know how terrified I was that like <laughs> the second round pick was going to be Pete Warner because uh, I, I don't was know terrified about... the Rams were going to pick him. No, I said they got Tutu Atwell. <laughs> yeah, and you saw my reaction to that. I've I've since I've since gotten way better with it. And Rams fans, I, I cannot in say here anything know, about but... Tutu because I actually interviewed one of his teammates a couple of weeks ago, and apparently, like they are they are best friends. They grew up together. Like it's the reason why they all went. So him. So Adonis Boone, the 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 guard from from Louisville that's in this year's class, JV and Hawkins and Tutu Atwell were all at rival high schools, but played like the same summer league ball team. So that's they all went to Louisville just to finally be on the same team together because they were just like best buds during the summer. Mm. But yeah, I, I can't say anything about it about Tutu Atwell. Like he he's he's like literally a third my size because he weighs about 115 pounds. But <laughs> <laughs> 115 my god uh, i called right. him to trend in holiday because i could not find anyone else that was that small in nfl history to be fair if trend in holiday played <laughs> in today's era he would have been a superstar yes because he was really really fast he was he also was so incredibly fast. small he was so he was five five he was five five and like 140 yeah, and like but he Tariq was faster Cohen than Tutu. He's kind of been a, a trailblazer for yeah. like the five five guys, which I didn't know existed <laughs> until Tariq Cohen. And w when you watch the film at NCA and T, and you're like, "Why am I watching NCA and T <laughs> film?" It's definitely not because of Brandon Parker. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> I would watch uh, Tariq Cohen, you know, like doing his thing, you know, being the huge, you know, was it the human joystick they called him? Yeah. And yeah, great nickname, like, by the way. He, oh, great. And he was a monster. I mean, like, and the thing that I loved about Tariq Cohen is that he wasn't just this gadget guy that everyone was saying he was because he's five, five. He was a little filled out. Mm -hmm. So like, because of that, he had really good contact balance. It was actually somebody that I feel, I still feel this way could be a bell cow for the bears. He doesn't need to be because they have David Montgomery, 
but he could absolutely carry 20 times a game and be fine. I actually want to talk about your Rams for a second. Yeah, go right ahead. Because I released a scatter report on bluechipscouting.com. Uh, <laughs> hum, uh, j- there's my plug. Uh, <laughs> hey, plug away. Probably about two weeks ago, uh, it was a corner out of Coastal Carolina, DeJordan Strong. Great name. Mm. Um, he's like uh, by a lot of people on, on draft Twitter. So given that I'm the Sun Belt guy, and I probably am not going to see very many people drafted before day three. Uh, I had to check him out, and I gave him a third rounder, and it was, I want to say it was Blaine that said that if Darius Williams is gone in the offseason, that to Jordan Strong, someone that they should check out. Uh, yeah, he led this. He he tied for the Sun Belt lead in interceptions with five last year. Hmm. Now, I mean, don't get me wrong. What's his measurables at? 5'11", 185. Does he have long arms? Yes. Okay, because and, he, and he's relatively fast too. I know the Rams are lo- they've been looking for speed and and long arms and mm-hmm. like they have this crazy metric today. Jordan Rodriguez came out with an article on, and it was basically they. I I have it somewhere. It's Blaine that sent it to me, so I'm gonna pull up. Let's see here, because I want to get this right because he sent me Jordan Rodriguez's article, and basically they have. Okay, so of the 5,000, you heard that right, 5,000, 5,000 defensive backs whom the Rams analytics staff has run through their internal evaluation programming, just four players satisfied all conditions in a multivariable query. Two of first, two are first round picks. One is Jalen Ramsey. Another is Robert Rochelle. So, Hmm. like, can you imagine that you're sitting there? You 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 have five thousand. You have a spreadsheet of five thousand defensive backs. You put in what you're looking for into this uh, query, and then it just punches out four names. One of which you already have on the roster. <laughs> exactly. And another, you're able to you end up acquiring in this fourth round. I thought the Robert Rochelle pick was amazing. By the way, I'm not high on David Long, so I loved that pick. The o- the other guy. Guess who the other guy was in this draft. It was my draft crush, Ifadu Melifanwu. Oh, you know, I, was oh, like, I loved Ifadu. Oh, I was so mad. By the way, the Lions, the Lions and Vikings just scooping up all of my favorite players this year was interesting the Lions, to see. The Lions slaughtered the draft. I think they won the draft. I do and as I, well. I think the Lions can compete. And I'll, I'll say this right now. If Aaron Rodgers does not play for Green Bay, the Lions can win that division. Yeah. Because I don't think that 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 Chicago is going to. I like Minnesota. Don't Nagy get me wrong. And Ryan Pace. <laughs> not, not with Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace. And don't get me wrong. I like Minnesota. They they literally drafted like my three favorite players, and, and all three of them were guys that texted me once they got drafted. Humble brag. Wink, wink. Hey, uh, there hey, we go. Um, including and, and actually, this is to brag. Their first round pick. Uh, <laughs> Christian Darisaw. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, no, I can't he, believe he fell, man. He is such a stud. It was, it was, it was wild that that week because I had talked to him, and mm. I because my whole thing was I'm gonna get a, a Christian Darisaw jersey wherever he goes. That's my guy. It was the first. It was the first like my guy that like had a chance to like I was legitimately first. All right. We're, we're sitting here talking in June. I was on him in April of last year. Like I was on Christian Darasaw. And so he, he and I were texting throughout the year and it was like Oakland. That that's really his floor. Maybe Washington, but I didn't want him going to Washington. Cause I will not wear that ugly ass Jersey. Uh, I, I will not even I will not disgrace my closet by having a. Uh, you don't a like the the burgundy? I think that looks kind of cool. I mean, it and would look yellow. it would look great in a division that's not mine. Okay, uh, <laughs> all right, all right, fair enough. I why. would never wear a Cardinals jersey. I would never wear a 49ers jersey, and I would never wear a Seahawks jersey. So exactly. I, I hear you. I get. Exactly. It. I get it. So I'm like Oakland, and then Oakland. I mean, geez, I thought Minnesota was either going to be Darisaw or it was going to be Jalen Phillips at 14. Oh and I can't believe when they traded out. Then. When they traded out, I'm like, okay, maybe the Jets are going to, but that wouldn't have made a lot of sense. So, like, the further it kept going, I'm like, okay, okay, now I'm getting a little nervous. No, it's going to be Washington. Oh, that's right. Washington likes, you know, dog chasing cars, Jameen Davis. 
Um, <laughs> I thought maybe the Cardinals were were on it, and then I realized that like I had heard two days out that apparently the worst kept secret in the entire league was Zayvon Collins was going 16th overall. Uh, because I had never heard that, so that I had, that was I had crazy. heard that to, uh, literally the day after I put out my final predictive mock draft. The day after that would have been nice to know, uh, because I would have had like another pick, but no, it was Ben Solak that it, that had said that. That the the uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just had to put that out. There. I love I love how people have run with the meme that his middle name is to ever do it, and it's not, and I'm sad. But <laughs> it should be. He can change his be. name. He, he still he, has time. Exactly. Um, but like, I was like, okay, it's not gonna be Arizona. And like, as the as we got into the twenties, we had I had heard reports from from people that knew like maybe Darisaw is gonna make it out of round one, and that scared me because he had no business going after Alex Leatherwood. Oh no! I mean, no. to be fair, Chris would the Darisaw- Colts have passed on him if he was there though? Yes. Really? You yes. think they would have picked they would have picked pay over him? Yes, because of, uh so they have like a personality test that's run by like former I think it's run by like a former drill sergeant to kind of see competitiveness and, and attitude and character. And the big knock apparently for Darasaw is that he's just like you know he immature which just means that like when he was done practice he when and i know what it was it was that when he's done practice he goes home and he plays madden and he's not like i'd rather a guy play madden than they go out and get himself in, in, in trouble are so, we like, serious right yeah now? no like, they're like oh my god i know i know i mean how many and i'm not knocking them because i'm also a streamer how many nfl players go like they go home mm-hmm. and they're playing Warzone, right? And they're cussing and they're with their boys, right? And they're being, you know, probably irrational uh, on live stream. How many NFL players do that? Like, and most they're stars. Of most of, most them. of them, exactly. So, like, like, it didn't make sense to me, but I was glad he landed in Minnesota. And then Minnesota just kept, so, seriously, between Devin and myself, they got brand guys in uh, Darisaw. Patrick Jones, uh, the tight end, uh, the the tight end slash punter kid, Zach Davidson. That was one of Devin's oh, guys. Oh yeah, Chaz Surratt was kind of a blue chip brand guy, which was nice to see. Uh, Devin and I both got a call from Cam Bynum when, when he was drafted because that is that is like our dude. Uh, oh, I loved him. Cam Bynum is like the nicest dude. Gave me one of the best answers to any question I've ever had uh, for the Super he was, Bowl. He was cornerback 11 for me. Uh, I had him in like, I think I had him in the fourth. And it was right in around where he went. And I was so... Yeah. He, he and there are people he, saying he yeah. should go in the seventh. I'm like, hey, did you watch him play? Yeah. And, like, was, and, and here's the thing. like, He spent his entire offseason training to play safety. Because he knew that, okay, I'm, I, he's probably not a good enough athlete to be outside. He's maybe not got the, the size profile. So he's going to have to play safety. He's going to have to play special teams. Um, now, I, I want to know how a kid that was born and raised in, in, in California is going to get used to a, uh, a, a, a Minnesota winner. Man, that, that sounds like his problem and not ours, luckily. <laughs> I mean, uh, well, I can't even say that. I live in upstate New York, so yeah, you know, I, yeah. I've gotten used to the winter. Um, <laughs> it's uh, I've never gotten used to the winter. Uh, Let's be real here. I, I, I'm not gonna lie; like it's actually been kind of nice. Uh, Cam has been one of the guys where even after the draft, he's like he's kept in touch with me. Like, which That's is kind of man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I have uh, that Blake Cashman, great, yeah. just a great guy. John Franklin Myers. And, and that was after he was drafted by the Rams. And it's hard, man, to get any interviews with Rams players. It's like locking key <laughs> trying to get, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah. Do you know how hard it is to try to get a Cam Bynum but... jersey up here in Canada. Do you know how hard it is? Also, that last name Bynum. Like, I don't know. Just it's a fire last name. It's a fu- it's a fire last name. Yeah, dude, I, I, I checked because you can't get them. You cannot get a customizable vikings jersey on nfl shop.com like uh, like dot ca like the canadian version like any of the the fanatics branded stuff can't get a uh a vikings customizable jersey so if i tried to do it through the states 
after the conversion for a non-stitched jersey, keep in mind, so for one of those heat pressed ones, it would cost me an earth shattering two hundred and seventeen dollars. What? Yes. Man, I just do DH gate. I don't even care who knows it. Uh, I there is a there is a um a replica jersey uh site run out of here in Toronto mm. where I ordered a Josh Allen one on the 26th and it's supposed to get here by Wednesday. So like insane turnaround, I- I- incredibly friendly uh staff. So if your if your viewers are looking for anything uh, it's jerseyhouse.com. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's not just football. I, I just they know have my they have basketball like fanatics. Yeah. That's that's all I know. Yeah. Because fanatics it, it... is screwed over like all of Rams like Twitter was talking about it. Cause you know, I mean, you drop the new uniforms, everyone rushes to go get a jersey, and they're like, Oh yeah, you'll get it week eleven of the season. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is like, a true story though. Oh no, I happen. remember. I remember seeing you talk about that. Those jerseys still haven't grown on me yet. I don't like them. I still I don't like them. I love them. Ah. Although I'll say this, I'll say this right now. I do not like the Ram head, and that is not going to grow on me. I like the LA logo. I like the bone. I like the blue, not the all blue, the blue pants and the blue. No, stop with the blueberries. I like the the bone pants with the blue top. I like the the uh, the blue top with the yellow pants because duh, that's like the old school. Yeah. Um, they have a lot of cool combinations. The all blue needs to go in the trash, and of course, now, that's what they're showcasing today in the <laughs> photo. Like it never fails. Literally, nobody wants that. Nobody. Now, I, here's the thing. So the the university I went to was. Um, we, we were the Rams as well. I think that my school, I'm sending this to you now, does the Ram head better than the Rams do? Uh, I, I just bet said they do. I just sent it to you on Twitter so you can see for yourself. Yeah, I bet they do. I'm going to check it right now. <laughs> I mean, I think the Ram head is terrible. I, I it, it looks like a polar bear crying. Like, I don't <laughs> like, but it's like anime crying. You know what I mean? Like, it's got the <laughs> like, I don't know. It's it's weird, man. You know, it's like, come on. <laughs> like, be fierce. Are, it's not good. No, it's like not good at all. And and like people are like, no, no, no. Like, trust me. And I'm like, no, there's no, no I trusting. Don't trust. <laughs> I don't trust you at all. I don't know you. No, no. But like for real, though, like I just I look at it. And I'm like, this is the best you could do. You waited all this time and this is the best you could do. Like, come on. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw Aiden's comment. The bottom one. <laughs> <laughs> Aiden does not care. He's amazing. Uh, uh ryerson rams yeah well like that's the thing so like their old I, school I, I, look so i i wasn't gonna drop the, the the school name because it's under some scrutiny right now and it might be getting renamed soon oh yeah the ram is or ryerson no 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 the university R- ryerson you know all ryerson makes me think of <laughs> if you've ever seen uh groundhog day I have Ned not. Ryerson. Needle no, on the head it's Ned. It's it's so the university was named after an old minister of education up here. I'm who, sure this is going to end well. Uh, let's put it this way. Um, there's a reason his statue on the university got torn down yesterday. OK. All yeah. right. Well, we'll leave yeah. it at that. Leave and it we'll, at that. Nothing we'll else we'll answer. Uh, <laughs> tribe here is saying they're saying Jacob Harris and Bobby Brown look like studs in camp. Could end up being our two best of the draft. I liked so, Bobby Brown. Okay, you did. Okay, I did. He, so <laughs> I think I put this in, in, in my in my draft uh, grades article. Um, the Rams drafted nine players. I watched nearly three hundred, and I only knew of three players that you guys actually drafted. So you really? guys were yeah, they were fantastic at drafting players I'd never heard of before. Oh, uh, both, I mean, drafting both guys named Ernest and I hadn't watched either of them. Jacob Harris, I didn't watch. The uh, only one but, I didn't know was uh, Ernest Brown. So, so the so three I that back. I had watched were yeah. Tutu Atwell, who was like wide receiver 31 for me or something insane like that. Uh, <laughs> that must be fantastic for your confidence. Uh, <laughs> I feel good about how they'll use him. And I think he went to a great situation yeah. where there's so no I, pressure on him. 
I had watched Tutu. I had watched Rochelle, which I thought was a bit of a reach. And I had watched, um, <laughs> and I had watched Bobby Brown. Everybody else, nope. I had no- there were certain guys. I'm like, why? Um, now, Jake, as someone, because I know you were also doing um, a full draft stream. Did you do all seven rounds? Oh, we did. Uh, we did we in ta- the studio. We tapped out after the sixth um, because we just did not care anymore. I was I, I was getting to the point where I was hosting and producing and having to, to make the graphics and everything like that. And, and, and when multiple long snappers had been taken. Um, uh, well, one of them was Cameron Cheeseman. I know. I know so, that's my guy. I, so, I've never watched anything on him. Just I love the last name. <laughs> Here's the, I, I remember making a joke about how they draft a blank long snap. Yes, I, I, I put it in the graphic, a blank long snapper. And he does. He one wasn't from Wisconsin and two doesn't go to the uh, go to the Packers. So what is the point? Eagles guys top five teams next year. I love how you're just an Eagles guy. Like, your name is Eagles clearly guy. there, but. <laughs> you know what? I'm just gonna change my Twitter name to Mike Eagles Guy Hernishan. Please I'm do just, it. I absolutely Please will. Uh, but top five teams? Are we talking top five teams like NFL, college, or are we talking top five teams for the draft? Because I'm a draft guy. I think yeah. he's talking top five teams I, altogether. I, I would assume so as well. I just wanted to be a bit of a smart ass. Uh, so I will say I'm never going to go against Tom Brady because – I, okay, I picked against Tom Brady and the Bucks for like nine straight – like uh, nine weeks or whatever um, where I would pick them and they'd lose or I would go against them and they'd win. And that was the, the thing for like a good two months. And then they started winning and it just stopped being fun because I didn't have another meme to keep going with the, with them. So I think that they'll be in my top five. This is in no particular order. Uh, the Bucks, the Chiefs. I want to say the Ravens. Yeah, they'll be getting Ronnie Stanley back healthy. I think the Ravens can be a top five team. I think the Bills, if Josh Allen proves that last year wasn't a fluke. Uh, they'll be a top five team. Yes, I'm. I'm loading it with uh, with the AFC. There's a there's a theme. The AFC is loaded. The AFC is loaded, and the NFC is kind of crap. I and think. We, it, yeah. Well, did you finish your five? No, I'm trying to think of the last one. I looked at the schedule. Okay. I looked at the schedule of obviously the the NFC East teams. They they cannot play a lick of defense, but the offense, if it's fully healthy, with Dak coming back. I wouldn't be surprised. I think I ran a simulation uh, when that one website, which name escapes me, uh, Playoff Predictor. That was the one. Um, when you could predict every game. And I believe the Cowboys finished 13 and 4. So maybe the Cowboys. Um, I mean, that same pre- Playoff Predictor. Uh, Over the I, Rams, my guy. Over the Rams. I, don't get me wrong. I love Matt Stafford. Uh, I think that you guys have some great, great players. I look back, uh, 2017 wide receiver three Cooper Cup, by the way. Uh, yeah, I, I was all about some Cooper Cup action back in the day. Um, yeah, screw it. I'm going to go with the Rams instead. You, you, you convinced me. I think the Rams can play an iota of defense, whereas the, the Cowboys cannot. Uh, so that that probably breaks it. The NFC West is going to be a slaughterhouse this year, man. I mean, the Cowboys are hoping that Dan Quinn is going to give them this rejuvenated energy that they didn't have on their defense. And uh, I mean, Dan Quinn, if it works, he's going to be a defensive corner for the next twenty years. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> like ooh. And you know what? Up. Given 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 the lack of awareness from uh, from Micah Parsons with him with him constantly oh, talking like about nine him and Jalen Smith. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mike. Well, I mean, yeah. hmm, Micah Parsons and a lack of awareness. Where have I seen that before? Yeah, I. It's, <laughs> it's funny because I was saying, man, he'd be such a nice fit for Vic Fangio's defense, and I'm like, wait a minute, no, he doesn't. He lacks awareness. Vic Fangio wouldn't want him at all. <laughs> On field awareness, off field awareness, you got none of it. Uh... <laughs> oh man, we got the Jets drafted to Michael Carter, spelled differently. Oh my God, yes. Um. 
when they drafted Michael You know Carter. you're a fun organization when you do that. <laughs> like that it, No, when they when they drafted the running back Michael Carter, yeah. they showed on ESPN the other Michael Carter. Oh, did and they? And then when they yes, oh they they showed the raw because I remember Twitter was just like, and the ESPN showed the wrong Michael, uh, you know, showed the wrong player for, for the Jets. Great job. And then I realized later, it's like, wait, no, no, no. I didn't realize till they had picked the Duke safety that there was another Michael Carter in this class. It was like a couple years ago when we had David Long and David Long Jr. Yes. And the Rams had to get draft the bad one that for whatever reason <laughs> and draft the bad one well the other one's a sixth round pick and doesn't play but <laughs> <laughs> but uh <laughs> and was it i'm the exact opposite ram head is okay and the stupid sunset la logo is the one i'll never like yeah i'm the opposite i hate the ram head it, it, mainly it's, because... the other one, it's, it's the one he's referring to that that, that he doesn't like the one that kind of looks like the haircut for someone about to ask for him ma- to speak to the manager <laughs> I, I don't I've never even heard of that, but probably. Did you see this by the way? We're gonna hit this again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, after the week I've had, man, I needed just some some some, some absolute shoot in the breeze ridiculousness. Well, you know, uh, in, in case anyone's is. wondering why I've why I'm wearing a hat indoors, Jake and I are the same age and, and, and the hair game for me, it's thinning, it's receding. I I look ten years older. Yeah, so he's got like lo- basically you could have just summed it up like I have LeBron's hairline. It's all good. <laughs> we share a birthday and a hairline. Really? Wow. Yes. How about that? LeBron, Tiger Woods, Kenyon Martin, Carson Wentz, and myself. I don't think Wolford's a fluke. I think I've said this. The Rams were ready to go ahead if they didn't get Stafford. Wolford would have started this year and they would have gone to the playoffs with Wolford. I'm not saying they would have won the Super Bowl like I believe they'll do with, with Stafford it, as long as everyone stays healthy because you're not okay. winning the Super Bowl without I, help. But I, I have to ask you because yeah. now, how are you going to cope with not having a uh, first round pick again to like 2024? Because it, do you want to hear an amazing same stat? way I've been doing it the whole you know this do, the last. Do, do you want to hear an amazing stat? Yes. One of my colleagues over at Blue Chip Scouting, Andrew Harbaugh, he, um, his son Elijah, was born before the 2016 draft. I already know. Where uh, this is going. So, so sorry. Hang on. He was either born like right before or right after. No, it's right after because he's never been alive for a Rams first round pick. <laughs> they almost had it that one year, and, and they, they traded it for Cooks. <laughs> yeah, he's never been alive. He is like five. well, no, no, twenty nineteen they had it mm-hmm. at thirty one, and then they traded, and then they good. traded, and the Falcons for whatever reason traded up to get Caleb McGarry, <laughs> and, and then the Rams <laughs> traded. And, and okay, this is another thing. If this is a pet peeve of mine, if you're at 31 and you're trading back, you should be getting like 40 or like 42. Yeah. Not like 57 <laughs> or whatever the hell they got where they drafted Taylor Rapp. I'm like, oh, so you just did not want to draft. You were like, you were like the guy, you were like the guy that's on the clock and the slow draft realizes he took eight hours. He, he took he took seven hours and fifty-nine minutes, and he's sitting there. In this this slow uh, dynasty draft, and he's like, you know what? I don't even care. I don't know any of these guys. I'm gonna go back to drinking, and then he just leaves it on auto pick. That's what the Rams were. They were like, you know what? If we trade further back, then we don't have to stress that, about this. That's like, and, and I I will <laughs> never forgive the guys at Blue Chip for making me have to watch this movie the day before the draft. I, wa- I watched draft so day for the, for the first time. So it's I watched not it realistic at all. I watched it when it was new and I hated it. I watch, I streamed it online while it was still in theaters and I wanted my money back and I didn't have to pay for it. And then I watched it on prime like the day before the draft. What, what we've described with those last two scenarios is like when the Jaguars in the movie decide that three second round picks is good enough compensation for like pick number six overall. Considering 
that in real life, to go from 12 to 3, cost San Fran, like, five draft picks. And to get Matt Stafford, cost the Rams every draft pick that, like, they will see until we have children of our own. <laughs> what was the, what was the, uh, the, the Madden that allowed you to literally make any trade? Uh, I believe you can still do that if you force the settings a certain way. No, there was one where, like, even if you didn't force the settings, it was glitched out. I think it was 2016. Oh, yeah. Um, Might be. Madden 16. You could literally get any <laughs> trade done. So I yeah. guess it was like that where, the you know, they would just take, oh, a sixth round pick for Julio Jones? Yes, yeah, I'm up. The, the best thing is, so I actually, it, I live tweeted watching that movie. <laughs> I know you did. I could I could feel the frustration, the anger, and then on top of that, you're like, man, I'm wasting all this valuable time right before the draft. Yeah, no, I was. And here's the thing: the, the, some of my favorite tweets were like, oh, like you know, uh, Terry Crews deserves better than this film. Uh, uh, Patrick Say the Spirit deserves better than this film. Kevin Costner kind of deserves better than this film. Kinda. Jennifer Gardner deserves better than this film. P Diddy deserves this film. Uh, <laughs> Oh my God! Arian yeah. Foster cannot act. Uh, uh, I feel bad that that was my first exposure without realizing it to Chadwick Boseman at the time. Oh uh, yeah, uh, and okay. now having only seen like three movies with Chadwick Boseman, and one of them is Draft Day. Um, I mean, the other two were uh, 21 Bridges, which was good. Really good movie. If you haven't seen that, would recommend. And then, of course, I keep Black trying Panther. to see it. I always forget to watch it. I, I think I streamed it illegally. Um, <laughs> Just says it online. <laughs> Gotta let, yeah, you know, the huge. You ever uh, see that meme with the... <laughs> you already know where I'm going with this. The FBI? So. Yeah. The terrorism? <laughs> Poking you with the stick? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's all i thought of when you said that i was just like the fbi is like poking you with the stick like do terrorism and you're oh, like yeah no there the, there was so my two favorite if i guess we've now just, just we're, i think this is a perfect way to end is just to crap on that movie because it's so bad uh oh first God. of all the bull rush that's not a bull rush oh like, the the right tackle never saw what happened he bull rushed him so bad and no uh <laughs> <laughs> that didn't happen. And then the pancake eating word I can't say on stream. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That that was the best part of that whole movie. I wa I watched that like 17 times because it was the only thing. I felt I that was two hours of my life. I will never get back. But I do want to answer Aiden's question here. Thoughts on Jamon Brown. Is that the former like Louisville slash? Yeah, third yeah. round pick for the <laughs> Oh, it's not even the one I was thinking of because I was thinking of of, of the, uh, you got the the one school, for the Bills. Right? I was thinking of the one for the Bills. Where is he now? Is he on the Eagles? I guess. I I didn't I didn't think I, Aiden's so like out there. I didn't like, know. I'm I'm looking. He's a great, free agent, great Aiden. Right there. <laughs> He's not on a team. I see him. He was on Philly <laughs> last year. He started a game apparently. Oh, he started a game. Yeah. Um. Did it you might stop have... watching by then? Where you were like done with it? <laughs> so here's the thing. I, I I've been very open about this. When I was working uh, during the season, I had to like scratch and claw to get any time I could to watch college, so I could I could keep up with the draft. So the NFL kind of fell to the wayside a lot of times, and then of course I once the SEC season started, I told my boss, I'm like, listen. This job is affecting my written job, and I need the time off, so I I can't work past six o'clock on a Saturday or five o'clock on a Saturday. And mm. then for the NFL, I have to do the same thing, so I can work till eight thirty because it's not uh, it's it's not as important. And no, I was actually doing that for, for the NCAA on for the Saturdays, and then on the Sundays, that was just so I could watch Ninety Day Fiance. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> and the thing is, I'm Ugh. not kidding. I am I, not kidding. I, well, I, I knew you weren't kidding. That's why I face palmed. <laughs> if you follow dude, if you follow my Twitter feed after about eight or nine PM on a Sunday night, there's like a ninety-five percent chance 
I'm talking about 90 Day Fiance. The rest of draft Twitter has the Bachelor slash Bachelorette. I have 90 Day Fiance. Give me that 10 times out of 10. <laughs> My God. <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> on another note, we have Scott who's asking you top five teams based on their draft class. All right, let me pull up my draft grades because well, that would uh, help. That would help. So I that don't have to help. try to don't have to try to you know remember that many. Um, hang on. I would probably say the Lions were number one for me. I thought okay, the so Broncos the, did well. Hang on, I'm just gonna see who did who got an A for me. So the Chiefs got an A. The Dolphins got an A minus. The Vikings got an A. Dolphins, yeah. Jets got an A minus. Eagles got an A minus and had a monologue about how the only bad pick was the one where they must have allowed Howie out of the storage closet. And that's when he ran to the phone and selected Milton Williams. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I had a whole thing where it's like he like wh- whoever, whoever locked him out of the room has a fruit basket come in their way. And then they must have let him in and he ran to the phone, got Milton Williams. So they went back to back to the hallway. You go. Uh <laughs> Uh, who else got an A? Uh, the Browns got an A plus from me. Oh, he says the Browns are up there. Yeah. Uh, and Tribe went as far to say Browns Rams Super Bowl. <laughs> and then uh, the Broncos and Lions got an A and an A. Sorry. Uh, yeah, the Lions got an A plus. The Broncos got an A. Uh, and the Panthers got one as well. They got an a. Oh, I thought the Panthers draft was solid. Panthers draft was really good. Um, when they got Terrace Marshall, that was their best pick, in my opinion. The fact like they got a first round pick. Oh, don't give me a Terrace Marshall is still on the board. I'm, it, it, I'm imitating myself on draft. Oh. <laughs> you also sounded like my guy Jared Feinberg for like twelve picks. Oh my god. He, oh, so he was happy. Oh yeah, no, he was he was thrilled about that one. Uh, the best meme to come out of our draft was the um, Nick Price laughing clip. Uh, he was just laughing uncontrollably for about twenty five seconds. I can send it to you once we're I off got, street. I got you one as well. Uh, so my cousin Adam Grego, because mm-hmm. I did it with him and Alexis, and so he he's a Steelers fan. They draft Trey Norwood, and he's like, oh, Nide rips on the bench. This guy stinks. <laughs> so literally the, oh. uh, on the same night, we were gifted so with, two, with two Nick Price memes that have lived on since. One <laughs> was his reaction to the Travis Etienne news that he was going to be used as a third-round pick, in which he just went, what the oh, hell is Lord. wrong with you? Uh, <laughs> No, 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 no. They're screwed. They're screwed. Ah, ah. And he just started flailing uncontrollably because he was just so upset. And then oh. there was an image um, of Mac Jones and someone of him like tweeting and someone posted like what, what he should have been text like what he was texting. And, oh and I can't God. say it on, on stream. I can't. Um, You're and I fine. Said, hmm? You're you're fine not to say it on yeah. stream. I'm going to give you a pass on yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not going to say it on the stream. Um, but looking at Mac Jones, you could probably imagine he could say this. And it was, <laughs> I said it to him, and he just started laughing uncontrollably for like a good twenty five or thirty seconds. Oh my god. I think I'm sending there, you in the private chat what was said. There were there were so many instances. Alexis had one where she's like, "Are they going to run a, an eleven wide receiver offense?" <laughs> and then, uh, what was it? I have the famous eye roll, or not? The, that was just like, like when they <laughs> drafted when they drafted Tutu Atwell. Like I can't even like imitate it because it was so perfect. But I was just like, check, check the private chat because now you'll see why Nick was laughing. Oh boy. <laughs> what do we got here? No, like it the, ever loads. No, oh, the, oh, the one of the private chat on, I got you. on street on stream link. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. You can't say that that, that bringing me on doesn't lead to, to good laughs, man. I hey man, I I hear you. Um, I, I swear if you need a laugh 
and you have like four and a half hours, just go and watch day three of our draft coverage because myself, Austin, and Nick were like, and Dante were like downright delirious for the entire day. Opinions, Opinions on, on the, the goat, goat and Ben Nucci. <laughs> I am not the person to ask about Ben Nucci. That I would like be him. I wouldn't that, call him the no, goat. that would be that would be the former president of Blue Chip Scouting, Dalton, Dalton Miller. That is still the most viewed article in the history of the site. He did an article on Ben DiNucci. It's the most viewed on the site. It is the most viewed article in the history of the site. I mean, hey, right now this is on YouTube. It's on Twitch. It's on Twitter. And it's on Facebook. But I can tell you with YouTube, there's one video that is is more than any other on my channel. I have almost 5,000 subscribers. I got 27,000 views on this. And it was John Wolford. And I think it's because... It not only brought everything, and I don't know how it didn't get copyright claimed. I also want to point that out because I use legit, I use XFL film or not XFL, AAF film. Okay, that makes sense. They're gone, but <laughs> a, a, AAF film. But then what didn't get claimed? I used like the broadcast uh, clips when he was at Wake Forest, whoa. and that didn't even get claimed. I was like, whoa, Exos is just having a just they're off their game today. I guess like ma- I blocked Viacom, everyone on like, Exos so that they can't copyright me for <laughs> really. So, yes, uh, on Twitter, I have blocked everyone that has Exos in their bio. Oh, someone that's put smart. together a list of everyone with Exos so that you can post clips. Can you, you send that to me? I, if I can find that list, I absolutely yeah. will. Um, oh my a- god. A- Aiden, I do love your 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 team's draft meme of uh, Presley Harvin the third punter one uh, out of the one punter I watched. Uh, <laughs> and here's the thing: the only reason I knew about Presley Harvin how is this? How is this a discussion? <laughs> <laughs> who like wakes up hold on a second who wakes up one day it's like i i oh, oh i just need to know vince wolfork or trace mcsorley like <laughs> in terms of what because I, I mean <laughs> third string quarterback at throwing the football i would assume trace mcsorley at sacking the quarterback or stopping the run or vince literally wolfork. doing anything else uh, yeah. <laughs> and are we talking current day vince wolfork because that Vince also, Wolfork just wants to be left alone. He owns a horse. He's big into horse racing. I know this because I worked with uh, a friend of mine that I used to work with back at like my first job, like f- not four years ago. That'd be nice. Uh, <laughs> 10 We're years ago. <laughs> We're getting old. Yeah, like 10, 11 years ago. Um, <laughs> wow, 10, 11 <laughs> years ago. No, no, it hasn't been that long. It's, it's like seven or eight. So yeah, seven or eight years ago, I had this friend that I worked with and he is actually a friend of Vince's oh. and he's a huge, he's a very avid, at least from the last time I spoke with him seven or eight years ago, he was a very avid horse racing fan. So he has a horse. He's very big on all that. I don't know if he's been in the Kentucky Derby or not. I, I do not know, but Vince wants to be left alone with his horse. <laughs> uh, back <laughs> back to Aiden's a- a- Aiden's draft meme. The Presley Harvin. The only reason I know about Presley Harvin is last year around this time, I did a deep dive season preview for every Power Five school, or like every Power Five conference, and then tried to rank them. And when it I got to Georgia Tech, my thing was I tried to come up with at least three players per team. And I had to push it for for, for Georgia Tech. Just be- <laughs> I mean, Jalen Camp is an easy one, but after that, no, I had Trace Swilling, who is the son of Pat Swilling. He went back to school. Uh, Tariq Carpenter, who is like a six foot four, two hundred. Didn't have Jalen Camp. I didn't. Wow. And then, and then I had Presley Harvin because how could you not? <laughs> have a punter that is six feet tall and unnecessarily 250 pounds and not in like the Brandon Fields. Why are they 265 and playing punter and have like nine pack abs? No, 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 no. Presley Harvin is built like me. Yeah. And I look, look, look at the bottom right here. This is, (laughs) this is why, this is why he was drafted. The two C's and everything. Presley, Har- he was punter one out of one. Uh, I, I, as 
as I said many times on stream, whenever a long snapper, a kicker, or a punter got drafted, I don't get paid enough to watch punters and kickers. Or and I'll, I'll never forget Chris Sims. When they, do you do you know? I'm K going, for you know kicker, I'm going. Yeah. Roberto Aguayo. I don't I don't know what to say. I'm just gonna give it a K for kicker because I don't I don't scout kickers. It's not my job. And <laughs> the thing is, that same night also gave us the uh, Christian Hackenberg F minus. I don't even know if that's possible. Oh, I <laughs> uh, was that? Connor Rogers? No, that was also Chris Sims. Wait, really? Wow. That was, was the same guy. That... meme gold. He was. Uh, Daniel Jones was the L. Oh, my God. Connor Rogers, man. That's my guy. Like, he, he went on there and he's just like. I love how we've been rambling for an hour and talked about essentially nothing. This is amazing. Oh, I know. It's it's great. <laughs> I mean, like it's just conjumbled talking. I, I don't. I mean, people are watching and enjoying it. So I know. It's entertainment. Aiden, I don't know how you get an F minus. I I was never that bad of a student. Um, I was only that <laughs> bad when it came to like math and art, and even I couldn't get F minuses. Uh, uh, Scott, <laughs> Scott, if if the Rams got DK Metcalf, like I suggested, ever, then I'd be very happy. I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. If you had Cooper Cup, if you had Brandon Cooks, and you had, and I'm assuming they probably would have traded Brandon Cooks. Probably. Assuming. But say they don't. You have Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, Brandon Cooks, and DK Metcalf as your four. That's the greatest wide receiver quad. I don't even know what quad. What the hell was I going to say? Quartet. Quartet. That's the greatest wide receiver quartet I've ever seen assembled. That's the Avengers. That's like, you can't beat that. No, you really can't. I actually, so... I mentioned earlier that I wouldn't break into who my 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 number one wide receiver from that year was, but I might as well. Nikhil Harry. Yeah, no, nah, it was, but that whole year was bad. Uh, I can pull up the wide receiver rankings because it's in my Google Drive. Um, oh boy, it, prepare yourselves because this it, it is it is not good. Why can't I? I, I should it. just like literally pin that. How do you get an F minus? Like, it's a great question. How the it hell is. Do, do you get, get an it? F minus? Uh, let's see if I can find it. I know Nikhil Harry was wide receiver one, which was suboptimal. Um, it's not letting me load my individual tabs, which is annoying. You ever go back to like your draft stuff and you're like, oh, God. I th And here I was. I thought I was going to be bragging about this. And now... I just looked at it. This is not a. Oh, well. dude! I found some. I found my 2017 ones today. Oh boy, how anyone decided that I should write for them? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> would you like to? All right. So, so g there were two amazing steals in that class uh, in DK Metcalf at 64 and Terry McLaurin in round three in the 70s, if I remember correctly. I thought correctly. Hakeem Butler in the fourth round was stupid. Like, that was just... I had such a high grade on Butler. So, so Terry McLaurin is probably the biggest steal, especially considering yeah. where I had him. Here are all of the wide receivers I had listed above of Terry McLaurin. It's a long list. Nikhil Harry, A.J. Brown, Hakeem Butler, Kelvin Harmon, D.K. Metcalf, Debo, Riley Ridley, Marquise Brown, Nicole Hardman, J.J. Arcego whiteside Anthony Johnson from Buffalo. Now we start getting into guys that have never played an NFL down. <laughs> Dylan Mitchell out of Oregon. David Sills the fifth out of West Virginia. Preston oh, my Williams. God, him. Gary Jennings out of West Virginia. Paris Candle, uh, Campbell and Tyree. <laughs> Might as well be Paris Candle. <laughs> and Tyree Brady from uh, from Marshall. Oh, I liked Brady. Um, oh, here, here's the best part. So Darius Slayton is like the, the Giants like wide receiver two, right? Yeah, what is this, 2018? 19. Oh, yeah, that's right. The Darius Slayton was wide receiver uh, sorry, 23, and in between McLaurin and Slayton were Emmanuel Hall, Andy Isabella, Jalen Hurd, Jacoby Myers. I'm about to meet you right there. Let's see what we got here. So so we're just talking about players that we have graded that ahead of Taylor. Yes. Uh, not Telly McLaurin, Terry McLaurin. I cannot talk. Uh, okay, so... DK Metcalf, Hakeem Butler, okay, Kelvin Harmon, AJ Brown, Debo Samuel, Terry McLaurin, baby, let's I go! Hate you. I hate <laughs> you. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Then sometimes I, well, I like. Well, then I had Keelan Doss, who <laughs> I really thought good things were going to come of him. I have Anthony Ratliff Williams, which Ooh. I don't know if he's got an opportunity. Antoine Wesley and Penny Hart. <laughs> oh, Penny Hart! I remember his hype. <laughs> I fell for the hype, man. I thought uh... he was Demarcus Lodge at eleven, Nikhil Harry at twelve, Marquise Brown at. 13 hunter renfro at 14 jj arcega whiteside 15 Miko hardman riley ridley stanley morgan jr Keyshawn johnson deontay johnson darius slayton i look back at that and i literally want to punch myself repeatedly in the face because i know for a fact i was way higher on deontay johnson and darius slayton than where i had them listed and i gave them a really high grade but i gave a lot of these wide receivers a high grade so like it pushed everyone down like I just hit my elbow on that. Um, I had but... <laughs> whoa. I had that many top 100 QBs. I had five. How uh, many wide receivers did you scout? I literally have 67 here. 36. All of my Zacchaeus. I had him at 59. <laughs> no. I had. Uh, I should have had him higher just because of his name. I, I had Benny Snell for the longest time during that season as running back one. Ooh. Who the hell is Brody Oliver? Why do I have him ranked 47? <laughs> the college school of mines. <laughs> Wait, did you say mines or mines? Like last <laughs> <laughs> like mines, like you're placing a mine on a minefield, you know? I would no, you know what? I want to see it now. And I think this is this is the perfect way because we've now gone so off the rails. I want to see a school of mimes. M I M E S go up against like an Alabama because get yourself out of that glass box and then get run over by a five star <laughs> from Florida. <laughs> oh my God. And who's the Jovan Durant? I remember he got last minute buzz, but he's literally the same size as Marquise Brown. So like, I don't, I don't know why we were flipping out of that. Paris Campbell, John V. Johnson, you know, all that Toledo, the Toledo trio. Oh yeah. Cody Thompson, John V. Johnson and uh, Deontay Johnson. So I'm looking back at this. This is back when I actually separated guards and centers. Oh God, I, I gave up on that. Oh my God. Why did I ever do that to myself? Do you remember Shalte Froholt? Oh yeah, he got drafted by the, the big yeah, the big Icelandic dude. Did I have is he in 2019? Yes, he is. Uh I have him as the 19th overall guard. Wow. I didn't even watch 19 guards. Um <laughs> I was big on Alex Bars. I don't know if he did anything, but uh, wait, hang on. Okay, so I actually didn't do too horribly in terms of who I gave a first round grade in that class. I had 20- all these guys are casuals. <laughs> uh, oh god. The um. Oh no, not where Bobby Evans is ranked. Oh no, I don't even know who that is. Bobby oh, Evans, man. the third round pick of this draft by the Rams. This draft made me so mad. I don't even remember. Bobby, Bobby. Evans. Where was did he go? Nineteenth. Was he Oklahoma? Player. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. So here were the first rounders for for twenty nineteen for me: Nick Bosa, Quinn and Williams, Josh Allen, Devin White, Ed Oliver, Jonah Williams, Cleveland Farrell. Yikes. Rashawn Gary. Nah. Brian Burns. Okay. Nah. Brian Burns been pretty good. Juwan Taylor, Greedy Williams, Devin Bush, Byron Murphy, Josh Jacobs, Sweat Hawkinson, Mullins. We will skip which quarterback I had QB one. He's no longer on a team. Uh, <laughs> Nikhil Harry, AJ Brown, what DeAndre Baker, that? Cody Ford, Andre Dillard, Taylor Rapp, Noah Fant. You can't think of which quarterback I'm talking about. Can Tyree you? Jackson? No, it's Dwayne Haskins. <laughs> well, he's on the, the Steelers. Oh, is he a Steeler now? Yeah, okay. I think he's going to take over. I, I, you had him number one. <laughs> I had him number one. I, I think he's going to take over for Ben next year. Now I have this year again quarterbacks with me. Yikes! In the okay. past, in the, the, in the past, worst, I've had some yikes. The worst quarterback that I've ever watched was in this draft, and I feel bad mentioning him by name because he might actually be a subscriber to my channel. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Uh, but I'm just totally kidding. But Brent Stock still from Middle Mid Tennessee State. He's six foot. 
215 pounds. He was the only lefty, and I wanted to cry. I have a hard time watching lefties, although Tua made it a little bit easier. Uh, but Brent had no arm whatsoever, so it was like oh my Molly god. He, he, and... Here were here were the bottom five quarterbacks in that for me, and I don't know why I ever put Eric myself... Dungy at the bottom. I don't know why I put myself through the torture of having to watch these five guys. Kyle Shermer from Vanderbilt, Trace McSorley, Clayton Thorson, Marcus McMarion, Nick Fitzgerald, and Jake Browning. Yeah, so <laughs> I actually, wow. Um, Devlin Hodges was my eighth overall quarterback. I didn't know who he was. So he was already playing for, uh, for Pittsburgh. Jordan Tamu was my ninth. Yeah. He was 11. Clayton Thorson was my 10th. I don't really know why. Daniel Jones was 11 for me. Trace McSorley was 12. Stidham was 13. Drew Anderson, 14. Easton Stick, 15. Michael O'Connor, 16. Jake Some of these Travis guys don't even sound like real people. And this was only two years ago. <laughs> David Blau. Never forget David Blau, the Thanksgiving miracle game, where I don't even think they won, but we made a big deal about it anyway. David um, Blau? And then they got replaced by Elijah Sindelar. Jacob Dolagala. That's not a real person. Yeah. He, I think he played a little bit for the Bengals last year <laughs> from Central Connecticut State. That's also not a real school. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, running backs. Daryl Henderson, number one. Joshua Jacobs, number two. Rodney Anderson, number three. Ah, oh, poor guy. He if If he stayed healthy... <laughs> and Aiden saying, well, I'm just going to put it up here. <laughs> Most, of these guys <laughs> like Matt Nauss. Most of these guys sound like players that I would create in Madden. Oh, uh, let's see. Here's one. I, I think this is my cat telling me, like, dude, what are you doing? You, like, Damian tiny... Harris, sixth. <laughs> I was pretty high on him. Where James you... Williams from Washington State. I thought he would be so much better. Um... Did you have Kyler QB one? Yeah, I, I think Kyler. I might have been one of the few that didn't, and it was because I really, really bought into the. There's never been a QB that small. TJ Hawkinson number one, yep. at tight end. Same. You I didn't. Could, you didn't buy into the the fan hype. I had them both as round one. Uh, number one safety. Uh. I had Adderley, and then Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, then Will Harris. Rap, Abram, Deontay Thompson, Gardner-Johnson, Nasir Adderley is the top five. Wait, you had Rap number one? I had Rap one. He was my. You, he was a first rounder. So the second rounder. Oh, second rounder. Sorry. Oh, you had a first rounder. On. Yeah, I had a first rounder. Oh, I got you. I got you. Corner, I had Byron Murphy. I think everybody had Byron Murphy. Greedy. Oh, you had Greedy. Okay, yeah, I had. They were close. They were. They were like eleven and thirteen. He was such a poor tackler for me. I just he he hasn't gotten any better. Yeah, uh, yeah I know was and you're like and then DeAndre Baker who may never play football again probably won't. Sean uh, Bunting, uh, Mark Fields I really liked. I, I, had, Bunting, I had Bunting at ten, corner ten. I had him behind David Long. Yeah, I had him at ten. David Long at thirteen. Jamel Dean I had at fourteen. Some of these guys <laughs> I'm looking back at now, they don't sound like real people. Like I, I, I you cannot tell me that there's a real person named Hamp Cheevers. <laughs> That's not a real person. Steven Denmark. Do you remember that guy? No. Six foot five corner from Valdosta State. <laughs> That's because I, I don't have time to watch Valdosta State. Oh my god, do you remember these guys? Do you remember watching um Terrell Hanks out of New Mexico yeah, State. Yeah, I loved him. Khalil Hodge and Trey Lamar. I loved, well, except for Trey Lamar, who I thought was terrible. He's literally 40. Oh my God. I, I, had, I, had, I, had a flash, I literally had a flashback to this guy yesterday and I couldn't remember his name. Do you remember Ben Burke? Ben Burke Irvin? Yeah, he's actually had a solid career. Is he actually? I well, couldn't tell you. No, I'm getting him confused with. Uh, Oh, the one guy has the weird name on um, Ginkle. Oh, Andrew Van Ginkle. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Ben Verkirvin was like the Washington linebacker that everyone. I liked was him. Be. He was 11 for me. Jose. Uh, uh, Josiah. Tu Tawaiefa was 10. Yep. Yep. He was eighth for me. Coney was nine. Okay. He was eight. Mac Wilson. Oh, yeah. So happened to him was seven. Bobby, Bobby Okarike, when he got drafted in the second round, I'm like, what is what is 
what is Chris Ballard doing? Because Okarike was my 17th linebacker. Oof. Chase Hansen? Is he related to Chad Hansen? I believe so. I remember Quentin Bell. I love how we're doing this on stream and people are like, yeah, let's let's keep watching these guys go through. Got eight people watching, so I do have to wrap it up soon though. Yeah, I'm ready to go whenever you are. All right. So I I, I want to see I just want to see who was my Mr. Irrelevant that year. Who was the lowest rated guy? Trey Lamar oh, it, was my lowest rated linebacker, 45. It, it was it was Cody Thompson. Cody Thompson. Hmm. Brian Burns was my number one pass rusher. You and Kyle Krabs. Yeah. I had Quinn and Williams at one, Ed Oliver at two, Brian Burns at three, Nick Bosa at four, Byron Murphy at five, DK at six, TJ Hawkinson at seven, Hakeem Butler at eight, Ooh. Nasir Adelie at nine, Josh Allen at 10. Juwan Taylor at 11, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson at 12, Chris Lindstrom at 13, Kelvin Harmon at 14, Ja'Kai Polite at 15, Ooh. Jonah Williams at 16, Daryl Henderson at 17, A.J. Brown at 18, Justin Lane at 19, Dalton Reisner at 20. Oh, Jeffrey Dalton Simmons, Reisner, the last, he was the last draft prospect to be older than me. Really? Yes. He came on our show uh, twice. I interviewed him at the Senior Bowl, and he came yeah. on the, uh, the podcast. He, he, he was the last draft prospect to be older than me. And I found this out not too long ago because I had always assumed that the last possible year was 2018 because I am a day younger than Miles Garrett. I just find I, I just found out that uh, I'm an idiot because I said I didn't like when the Eagles picked Andre Dillard. But where did they pick him? 27th, 23rd. I literally have him as the 27th player. <laughs> So That's I don't amazing. I don't know what I'm thinking, but so the the so <clears throat> to, to wrap up today, we have learned that so, that the draft analysis uh, aspect of things is a complete crap shoot um, all the time. And that and that half and that looking back when we look at our 2021 rankings in the year 2023, half of them won't sound like real people. Uh, and then Jake and I in 2023 will be very happy sipping mimosas uh, and laughing and drinking the tears of everyone that said that Pete Warner was a first or second round player. <laughs> Damn. I was not expecting that's off the top rope, man. Um, I just realized I had Kyler at 23. So while I, he was my QB one, I didn't have him in the top 20. I think that this coming class could be a lot of the same. I was talking about that. But none of us have a quarterback inside of our top 15 players. Hmm. I mean, this I had uh, my number one player was uh, Penny Sewell. He, he was second for me. Yeah, I, I my, my one and two him. never changed. <clears throat> my um, who did I have? So. Looking at it real quick, I had Penny Sewell, Kyle Pitts. He was second Trey for Lance. you. Wow. Those are my top three. Mine was, um, oh, geez, what was it? Uh, what was it? I know Lawrence and Sewell were one, two for the entire cycle. Jesus um, I, I I have nothing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for me, what was it? Uh, Lawrence was one. Sewell was two. Was Pitts third for me? Of now, of course, my board doesn't want to load, which is just wonderful. Yeah, uh, I think that I think that's the universe telling us we've gone on long enough. <laughs> gone pretty long we're at yeah. uh, now a minute and 18 oh no not in a minute hour and 18 um, <laughs> i love the cincinnati quarterback too we uh this year yeah i'm a ritter fan you're a ritter guy you don't I'm care a, about the accuracy issues i don't i think they'll get better and i think it was smart very very responsible for him to go back to school i it you, all right so it loaded on, on the site it was lawrence sewell uh, Pitts, Fields, and then Micah Parsons at five. Parsons, that's right. 
none of my guys that were in the that were in the uh, none of my first round grades slipped past round two, which is nice to see. I had a higher grade on Davis Mills than Mac Jones. Um, you are not alone because Dante Colinelli had the same thing. He yeah, had a fifth I fifth round grade on Mac Jones. Davis Mills is going to end up starting for the Texans and he actually will. not look terrible. Uh, it's going to happen. So I. I, I I I was afraid of greatness and didn't do that. Um, but I think they were a lot closer um, than a lot of people thought they were. Um, yeah, should we wrap it today? Yeah, I think that's good, man. I know we, we were like, yeah, we'll do thirty minutes, and then like it just kept going and going it just and kept going, going, and going, and going and going and going, snowballing like you know Peyton Manning and the Broncos against the Seahawks in the Super Bowl, you know that whole thing. Um, <clears throat> but that is. <laughs> I, i'm sorry i should give you uh there and there was a fly so i had to swat it and oh. also hit my mic <laughs> but but uh yeah i didn't just randomly you know like do that for no reason um but yeah thank you guys so much for tuning in thank you my man for coming on you can go follow mike hernition yes i know how to actually say your last name unlike most people uh at mike friends. h yeah, I, I, dude, I'm really I'm bad with pronunciation. So if I can pronounce your name, that means I actually care. Um, <laughs> so it's at uh, Mike H. I have to wait for it to come back around. Underscore, I believe draft. draft. Yeah, there we go. It was a good guess. Uh, uh, FCS and Sunbelt Area Scout for at Blue Chip Scouting. Go follow them. They're great people. All of them. Plus, he is also the host of at Big Shots Pod. Coming so, soon, the return. The return. So make sure you go and not only follow that, but subscribe because I I imagine you're on like I like iTunes and all that. We're on everything. Yeah, so go go subscribe. And, Big shots and pod. Blue chip scouting on YouTube. Uh, myself and yes. and uh, Nick Price do a once weekly uh, show. Uh, Nick Price is the newest co-host of uh, the Big Shots Pod with me. Later, um, Aiden. And um. Man, yes, we funny. do. We do once a week. Uh, we also have Tyler Fornis and Andrew Harbon doing once a week. And we have Garrett Ballard and um, Ben Glassmeyer starting their new live show, I believe, this week. Nice. So lots of new content and any player interviews or coach interviews or uh, media analyst interviews are going to be up on there as well. So lots of content. Yeah. I mean, you guys are doing a really good job. I tune in every now and then when I can. Um, I always retweet your stuff, as you know. The I appreciate engagement, the group engagement group that doesn't actually engage. But no, no shots fired or anything. Just you know, no, no. <laughs> but uh, that's gonna do it for us. Uh, appreciate you guys so much for tuning in. I will be back tomorrow with Patrick Chiotti, and we will be probably be talking about Broncos since that's kind of his. I would world, assume but... so, but I can I can I can tell you one, it's Coyote, and two, he is hilarious. Coyote, yeah, okay, it's Coyote. Uh, I had to learn it before I I brought him on as well. See, now I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to pronounce his name, <laughs> and it's gonna be all because of you. And he's gonna be like, "How did you just assume?" And I'll be like, "I don't know. I, I don't just, know. You know, I, uh, I I know some homeless guy named Mike, and <laughs> I mean." If the shoe fits. If the shoe fits. But uh <laughs> sorry, I saw Ashton's comment. I think that's a great way to end this. <laughs> Have a good day, Eagles guy. Eagles guy. Have All a good right, day, guys. everybody. We're we're gonna sign off. Later, guys. <laughs>